Welcome to the New Calculus site. I am John Gabriel. In this episode or this YouTube video, I'd like to talk about something I considered a long, long time ago. Uh, I'd say, well, pretty close to 45 years ago. And uh, recently I was reading an article which you're looking at in front of you, uh, which was written by Janet Beery. She's a professor of mathematics at the University of Redlands in California. <coughs> and she's written several <coughs> articles, <coughs> and uh, they're all listed down here. First, she gives an introduction, then she deals with Pythagoras, Archimedes, Arabiata, Abu Bakr, and all the rest, all the way through to Bernoulli, and then she has a conclusion. And uh, let me first say that uh, there's a lot of interesting history here. So she's done a pretty good job from the historical point of view. And uh, a student can definitely learn a lot from reading these articles on MAA. MAA, I'm sorry. Um, but in spite of all the articles she's written, Th th there seems to be n no easy method to find the sums of powers, uh, to find a formula for the sums of powers of positive integers. Um, <coughs> so I looked at this and I kind of scratched my head and I thought, well, wow, you know, when I was at college in 1981, university in fact, I actually de defined a method or discovered a method which uh, can be used to find the formula for any of the sums of powers, of positive integers. It's so simple that one doesn't even require to understand it, just to be able to construct a finite difference table and take it from there. And I'm, I'm going to show you how this works in a moment. Uh, but first, uh, coming back to these articles by Barry, um, hope I'm pronouncing her name right, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're pretty good, and I would read through them because it gives you a lot of in insight into how uh, different uh, academics in history and in the past uh, approached this problem of finding the formulas. Um, unfortunately, uh, Beery did not know of my method, and it's a shame because MAA, MM. MAA would never publish my article, given that, that I am a pariah amongst the <laughs> mathematics community. Well, I wear that label pr proudly because uh, I think it's better to expose ignorance and reveal the truth, uh, no matter what the circumstances are. All right, so anyway, uh, you can look at this article at this link here at the top in the URL. Um, I would go to the link and read it, especially if you're a student. Um, I think you'll find it very helpful. And now I'm going to show you <coughs> uh, how I solved this problem when I was still very, very young. Okay, um, this is an article I wrote, and I'll also let you have a copy of this in the comment section of the YouTube video. It's only five pages long. And it, it, although it explains the method, uh, you don't really even have to understand the method because it gives you an easy way to find the formulas by just simply drawing up a finite difference table and then taking the uh, differences until the first zero difference, as you see in this table here. I'll explain it in a moment. Okay, so um, Isaac Newton uh, first began to experiment with finite differences in his interpolation polynomial. This is the kind of stuff that you'd probably learn only in a second or third year of uh, a math degree, and sometimes only in postgraduate studies. So <coughs> uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you usually learn it in the first year of a mathematical statistics course because it's invaluable in mathematical statistics. And I don't know why it can't be taught sooner, but there you have it. 
So okay, so what happens here is, as you see in the table here, we let the arguments be x0, x1, x2, and so on. Um, and they're successive with a fixed difference between them. So for example, the difference <coughs> you know, between each argument will be uh, u1 minus u0, where f of x0 is the value at x0, and f of x1 is a value at x1, and so on. And so the difference, the first difference here would be delta u subscript 0, second difference, uh, well, it's still a first difference, but it's the first difference between the second and third arguments in this particular case, and, and so on. And then we get a second difference, uh, and the second difference is the difference between the first differences, and finally the third difference, which is the difference between the second difference results, okay? And we continue the difference table until the last column is zero. Of course, if a series, uh, if a series does not uh, have convergent properties, this method won't work, but it will work for any of the sums of series in integral powers or positive integers using finite differences. Right, so a simpler representation of this table might be as follows. In other words, just cutting out all the calculations. And what you see in that paragraph uh, says, the knowledge of successive differences is an important contribution to the derivation of a simplified formula for divided differences where arguments are in arithmetical progression. This same knowledge leads to a method for finding sums of any given series in integral powers. And so from table A, you can see that if you add up all the first differences, as I've done here, you can represent that by what's shown on the right-hand side with u subscript 1 minus u subscript 0 plus and all the rest of them, okay? So you can study that later. And then again, we do the same thing with the first differences here. And in general, we end up with uh, a difference u subscript n equal to that, okay? Where all the uh, c1, c, c subscript 1, c subscript 2, c subscript 3 are all binomial coefficients. And so we could arrange <coughs> the like terms in columns as I've shown in this table. <coughs> and you'll see that in this first column here, Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Just this first, I'll just point to it. This first column here, we have the sum of these, which gives us the combination of n things taken one at a time. The sum of the second differences is the combination of n things taken two at a time. And when we sum them, this is what we get at the bottom here, n, n minus 1, etc. Okay, and we can see that column 1 contains the terms whose coefficients are of the form n0, right? So uh, these identities here, 0 taken 0 at a time, 1 taken 0 at a time, etc., are all equal to 1. Okay. And from this we can deduce this particular identity, which leads us to uh, the sum of n terms given by n things taken 1 at a time, and more generally, as we see down here with these formulas, uh, we, we eventually get down to this identity here, and that helps us to uh, figure out how to add up all the different columns and find their sums. And it turns out that the sums of these columns are actually the sums of uh, powers of positive integers. And you'll see the first few results here. So for example, um, if you go through this article and study these, <coughs> let's take a look at the sum of squares, which I do down here. Okay, so if the first argument is 1, as you see in red here, okay, then, and the sec then, I mean, if, there is a, if f of x is 1, and if f of x, if f of 2 is 4, and f of 3 is 9, etc., 
Then we have these as the first differences, 3, 5, 7, and 9. The second differences are constant, and the third difference is 0. Well, it turns out that all we have to do is just take those ones in red, as you see there, and add them up like so, and that will give us the formula for the sum of squares, which you see down here. Yes? So, for example, if you wanted to find the sum of cubes, what would you do? Well, let's just put that aside and let's see how to find the sum of cubes. Right, so now, the sum of cubes, we would have, oops, let me get back on there again. Let's just write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that's already a lot, but it doesn't matter. Let's calculate the, the cubes. That will be 1. That will be 8. That will be 27. That will be 64. That will be 125. That will be 216. Let's just check that I'm doing all these right. And so what is... 6 cubed, yep, and 7 cubed, 3, 4, 3, and let's just do this one for good measure, 5, 1, 12, okay? Now, what we have to do is look at the first differences, right? So, the first difference is going to be 7, yes, like that. Second difference is going to be 19. Uh, this difference here will be 64 minus 27, 37. This one here will be 125 minus 64, 61. That difference will be 216 minus 125, which is 91. And let's just do that last one. 216 minus 3, 4, 3. And that's 127, okay? And then again, we take the second difference, which is, let's see, 12, yeah? And that will be what? 19 minus 37. That will be 18. And we can see that all these are going to go up in in 6. Okay, in uh, differences of 6. So the next one will be 24. Next one will be 30. 36. Next one will be 42. Okay. And so the third column will be 6 and 6 and 6 and so on. Okay. And the last column, which is the fourth difference, 0 all across. So now, according to my method, according to my method, all you need to do is look at these coefficients, like so, right? And see what I've done over here. All I've done is I've said, okay, take the first one, which is 1 times n1, right? Plus... The second one, which is 7 times n2. The third one, which is 12 times n3. And the last one, which is 6 times n4. And you can just work out this whole thing here. And this will be the formula for the sum of terms to the power of 4. So this will give you 1, 4, plus 2, 4 plus 3, 4, plus dot, 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 uh, k, 4, or n, 4, okay? And so this is the sum to powers of 4, positive integer 4. Okay, and this method is very easy because all you have to do is, just to summarize, is you construct a difference table like this with constant differences between the arguments and 
put your value of the function here. This is the argument. Take the first difference, the second difference, the third difference, and so on. Obviously, um, you can tell by the power which one will be... Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake here. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Just seen it now. This is not for the fourth power. This is for the third power. Okay. I'm a little dreamy this morning. Three, 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 three. Okay, so this, is, this will give you the sum of cubes, all right, which uh, you can verify if you expand this whole thing out will be, will be that, this whole thing squared. Okay, so this here is the sum of cubes. Okay, so uh, I don't really prepare for these videos, so I apologize that I made that error. But at least I saw it in time and corrected it. Okay, so now, um, that's the method. And you can use it to find the formula for any of the sums of positive integers, powers of positive integers. And that's pretty much it. So I will load this article up on the YouTube comment section so that you can access it. And please... Uh, Click like if you like this method. I've generally been very positive in this uh, YouTube video. <laughs> I haven't really attacked my fellow mathematicians. <laughs> but uh, this is not uh, really the format I will continue to use. I think ignorance and stupidity need to be exposed. And so I'm going to be quite harsh in my subsequent, sub subsequent uh, videos. Uh, in order to get the points across. But uh, if you like my videos, click on the like button. And this is my YouTube channel here, okay? So you can go here and become a subscriber also. And if there's any particular topic you'd like me to talk about, send me an email and I will explain to you. I'll, my, I might even produce a video on the topic. And I hope you've enjoyed that uh, little presentation on the sums of uh, powers of positive integers. And I'm John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel.